God sent Elijah to show me where I came from. He sent Moses to take me out of the Sodom. He showed me
steeple here. See yeah. what's going on. You gotta use our rope. And behind us there is going down. I can't really see the gravity of it, but yeah. We made it thus far. Oh yes, it was awesome. Um, and thanks for the guidance. My brother has been <laughs> very helpful. So he I ben underestimated John. things. Yeah. <laughs> God is good. God bless. A South African tree. This is a tree that <laughs> <laughs> it's not a child's play. <laughs> Say, brother, God bless you, bro. But if I blow in and we only about five minutes until he tries. <laughs>
for each age receives what the Spirit has to say to that age. And that one messenger is the messenger to the true church. He speaks for God by revelation to the churches, both the true and false. The message is then broadcasted to all. But though it is broadcasted for all who come within range of the message, that message is received individually by only a certain qualified group in a certain way. Each individual of that group is one who has the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying by way of the messenger. Those who hear are not getting their own private revelation, nor is a group getting their collective revelation, but each person is hearing and receiving what the messenger has already received from God. So when we look at this quotation, I uh, just to take the key elements from it, it has to be one messenger in one age and people that will come within the range of that message, uh, it will be both uh, true and false, but it says the, that message is received individually. It's not a group affair. And that revelation is not a collective revelation, but each person is hearing and receiving what the messenger has already received from God. So I wanted to just read that quotation and just to indicate to you that this message cometh to us by revelation. And that revelation is an individual revelation. It is not a group affair. It is not a church affair. Uh, it is an individual affair. But after it has become an individual affair, then those people that have received this revelation do come together and have a fellowship among them. Now, I traveled to Trinidad and Tobacco, and as I indicated, I had a tremendous time there, and I just want to firstly appreciate Pastor George, uh, Ratanang George, Pastor Ratanang George, uh, his family, and the elders, and as well as the Ephesians saints, Ephesians Tabernacle saints. We had a tremendous time when we were there together. Now, what I appreciate, I normally travel, and I've preached in many places, but what has made me to fall in love with Trinidad and Tobacco is that I was, I, was, I was at liberty to preach as though I was preaching in my own assembly. I preached my own convictions, and I was at liberty to just speak and declare what God had laid in my heart. And I am really, really grateful to uh, the saints, particularly at Ephesians Tabernacle, and as well as the way I preached, and I preached for uh, at Yadel Tabernacle, Brother Terence Thornhill is a minister there. Uh, I had well, as well, I felt at liberty. It was like home. I preached as well for our elder, Brother Albert Green. Uh, it, I was at liberty as well. I preached as though I was home. And then I preached at uh, in a sanctuary, Tabernacle, Brother Andrew, uh, Fun Hill, uh, Fun Long, uh, Andrew Fun Long, um, uh, Andrew Fun Long. I had a tremendous place time there with his family as well. I felt at home. So it has been a tremendous blessing being, uh, in Trinidad. Now, firstly, when I got to there, we had a minister's meeting and it was a pastor's meeting and I was, I was quite impressed and I'll tell you why I was impressed. So the pastors in Trinidad do meet once a month. They've been meeting for the past 30 years. And I think Brother Green has been chairing those meetings, the pastor's meetings for the past 30 years. So what do they do? They normally would have a subject that they would introduce and say, next time we meet, we're going to discuss this subject. And each pastor will go and investigate what the message says about the subject 
and what the scriptures do say about the subject. And in the next meeting, they make their own presentation, uh, presentations on, on the subject. And it doesn't mean that they agree all the time. They disagree sometime. But what I appreciate is the maturity with which they've been consistent on these meeting, meetings, uh, irrespective of whether they agree or disagree. But they've been very, very consistent on these meetings. So for me, it was, it was maturity. And I think what is lacking today is the maturity to disagree and still be uh, and still and still get along and still be brothers and still be sisters. It doesn't mean disagreements should breach enmity. So it's something that I've really enjoyed. We had a discussion about theophanies when we were in that meeting and we looked at different aspects of the doctrine. And I was tremendously blessed to meet a uh, number of pastors there. Uh, as I mentioned, I think I must have met Brother Ray. I've met uh, met quite a number of ministers, uh, Brother Josh, uh, Brother Shem, number of them. But some I may not mention, but I met them. And I was tremendously happy to have met them. And I think it's something that is very interesting to have had pastors' meetings for the past 30 years monthly without a fail. I think we need to take our heads off to them. That's maturity. That's me. I don't care. I don't care what challenges are there. I don't care what imperfections may be there. But the fact of the matter, we've got to really, really salute them for having had these meetings for the past. 30 years and the maturity to get together around in the same room and discuss issues. One thing that I liked is that when you have such a forum, you are able to hold one another accountable as pastors, which is something that is lacking in the message, which is something where we have seen sovereignty being abused. And people do quite a number of things in the name of the message and in the name of our prophet without being held accountable. So, in Trinidad, there is accountability in a sense that in those forums, pastors can be able to hold one another accountable. And it's something that I think is worth replicating uh, everywhere in the world. And what makes them to believe in that is because they are very diligent and they respect what the prophet messenger said. I think the prophet said something here in this uh, message. He says in the message taking sides with Jesus, paragraph 82, he says, Now, I think this church, if you men would, when you built this church, make this like your headquarters and like Brother Neville here, being like the senior elder among you, see, and sometimes you get a question that you can't discuss out with your church out there, then bring it here to Brother Neville and you all discuss it together. And if you can't come to any decision, I'll be coming by pretty soon, then you will all come together with it. Then he carries on and says, then in there, get training in your own groups. Other ministers mean that you see that has a calling in their life for the ministry. Train them young men. <laughs> Bring them in here to the elder. All of you sat together in ministerial meeting and they teach the deeper things of God. But here is a warning. Don't go on the bed and keep someone who can have confidence in to be like a leader for you. Now, I said I was tremendously uh, blessed to have seen or witnessed them uh, living this quotation. I'll tell you why I'm, I'm impressed. Most of the times in the message, we have new doctrines. And some of the doctrines, they come up. And people would introduce maybe a doctrine or change things. But they never have a forum where they can be asked, why are you changing? Why are you adopting this new approach? You just see a change in a new approach without really them explaining themselves as to why they are changing. So I think such forums are very critical, not only for young ministers where they come in and they are among the elders and they learn from them, but it 
creates a platform even for young ministers to be able to ask the elders and say, but in such and such a year, you preached it this way. Why are you changing it today? And and for, for I think those forums are critical. The the robust fellowship that takes place in such forums allows for accountability and allows for us to be able to uh, bring hygiene to the message. And I think it's a phrase that we need to look into: bring hygiene into the message. There's been. Uh, contamination over a period of time because of isms and man-made ideas. So it's great that pastors can come together and reflect on the message and reflect on 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 on, on the doctrine, the journey, and the scriptures. I think it it allows accountability. That's what I like. It allows accountability and it brings hygiene back into the message. We have to bring hygiene back into the message. What do I mean? We have to make sure that the way the message was given by the prophet messenger remains intact without an injunction of man-made ideas. So I uh, appreciate it to be part of those pastoral meetings. Uh, and, 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 and I want to salute the pastors for having allowed me to come into those meeting and to that meeting particularly. And I had a, a tremendous time and I learned so much and may they continue in that manner. It's what makes it was, it is what gives direction, uh, to the ministry. It is what keeps a lot of things at bay. It is what allows pastors to, rise above the isms and 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 funny movements that may come up in the message so may they continue in that manner it's not easy in some countries it's difficult and it's difficult to get one pastors in one room because of egos most of the time because for us to come into one room there's got to be a view that we are going to learn from one another. There shouldn't be any dominant figure except it being the message that would dominate in such meetings. Because no wonder Brother Brenham at some point he, he mentioned in the Great Commission, paragraph 16, he said, recently I had a breakfast with a bunch of ministers and I say this with respect, brethren, I would have rather had a breakfast with a bunch of witch doctors. Now that sounds horrible to say than these men. I would have had a better reception. I would have had a more an agreeing spirit with a bunch of witch doctors many times than I would with that bunch of ministers. Such a horrible thing. God delivers us from such. Now, Brother Brenham is mentioning that sometimes it is easier. You would find more... Uh, unity among which doctors than you would find among ministers but ministers in trinidad have done a tremendous work in making sure that they do that it's not a once-off wonder they have done that for the past 30 years they are available in those meetings uh each month and i want to say pastors in trinidad and tobacco continue in that manner you may not know how much you are able to avoid a lot of things by having those meetings. Let those meetings continue. And those that are listening, if there are no meetings, there's got to be pastoral meetings. And 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 it, it does so much in terms of the direction of the ministry and in terms of accountability and as well as in terms of making sure that we 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 maintain hygiene in the message. Hygiene is when you make sure that something is clean of debt, is clean of germs. And that's why I say there's got to be hygiene in the message. And we have to bring hygiene back into the message as we have always known it to be. So keep it up, pastors. It was great being with you there. Now, there's a saying that I came across in Trinidad. It says, when your neighbor house on fire, wet yours. I cannot use the uh, Trinidadian uh, accent, but you know, when your neighbor house on fire, wet yours. It simply means, don't think that what happened to someone else will not happen to you. Take precautions and learn from other people's mistakes. So, 
I think the pastors in Trinidad would know what I'm talking about. Just make sure that you learn from other people's mistakes and don't repeat them. Uh, and this goes across the board. Some We see things happening, and when something is happening, and maybe if your brother makes a mistake, you cannot afford to replicate that mistake in your life. You learn and avoid such mistakes. So that's my parting shot to the pastors in Trinidad as far as that pastoral meeting was concerned. And I had a good time. Now, believers in Trinidad and Tobacco are hospitable. I have traveled many places, but I want to say, they are, they are, their hospitality is unmeshed in a sense that, I don't know, many times this family or families would say, what are you doing for breakfast? Can you, can you have a breakfast at our house? Uh, can you have lunch at our house? Can you have dinner? Most of the time I was quite overbooked as far as where I could dine. Believers went out of their own way to prepare and to make sure that they exposed me to the delicacies of Trinidad. Uh, uh, and I think yeah, believers, they are a wonderful group of people, sweet spirit, and reminds me of what the prophet says in the message, God hiding himself in simplicity. Paragraph 14, it says, For no matter how beautiful the structure is, that we certainly do appreciate the beauty of the child of the the beauty of the church is the character of the people i trust it will always be a house of god of beauty so hence i say i had a, a tremendous time in trinidad in the sense that wherever i i went it was just a a group of people that were so hospitable. I'm here. I'm not just talking only about believers. I met uh, an old man called Uncle Harry. He's a, he's one of the leading business people in Trinidad. He's not a he's not in the message, but he was so hospitable. Took me out for lunch. Had a fellowship. Had time for me as a stranger. Uh, uh, coming from South Africa and everywhere where I went, every time I was introduced is from South Africa, I would be given either something, fruits, food. They just wanted me to have something. Both believers and unbelievers wanted me to have a great time in Trinidad. I remember when I was leaving at the airport and the lady that was checking my passport at the immigration he asked me, did you have a good time in Trinidad? I said, certainly, I had a great time. Everyone just wants a visitor to feel welcome in Trinidad. So it's not just among believers, it's across the board. And for that, I, I really appreciate. And I believe that believers often set the temperature for the country. And you believers in Trinidad have certainly set a good temperature for the country. It goes across assemblies, across believers. Everyone just wanted me to have a great time. And I want to say, indeed, I had a great time. And I say, yeah, your character is beautiful as people and as a collective. And God bless you for that. Now, the prophet says, in divine love, paragraph 17, it says, now, if you really love God and you know there is some kind of people that's really good people, only you just can hardly stand to be around them. That's right. Why is it? They create that atmosphere. There's some kind of people that you just love to be around. They create that atmosphere that they live in. So, I want to say I had a tremendous time. I was hosted by Brother Jonathan with his lovely wife and his two beautiful daughter and, and son. And I just fell at home. It was, I didn't feel like a visitor. It was even difficult to leave because I, their home had become my home. I, I was able to move with ease 
And hence, I remember this quotation that some people create an atmosphere and you just love to be around them. Since at Ephesians Tabernacle were tremendous, I just loved being around them. Uh, uh, since at Yadel Tabernacle, amazing people uh, at Inner Sanctuary, Inner Vale Sanctuary, amazing people, Brother Andrew Fanlong uh, with his assembly, uh, Brother uh, Albert Green with his assembly. I had a tremendous time. It was difficult to live uh, uh, Trinidad because I felt at home. Both the young people, the elders, they just made my stay to be so pleasant. That's why I see, as the prophet say, says, some people create an atmosphere. So believers in Trinidad created such a wonderful atmosphere for me, and I had a, a tremendous time. Now, when I was at the airport, I think I was checking in. I think the lady at, at, one, at the airline, I think it's a JetBlue airline that I used, uh, the lady at the counter said, what did you enjoy about Trinidad? I said, certainly bake and shark. It was an amazing meal that I had. Uh, I had, I mean, you had different cuisines, but that one just stand out. Now, Brother, brother George, uh, brother Ratanang always in the morning would say, what are we having? And everywhere we went, they would ask him and say, did he have the doubles? Did he have bacon, shark? Uh, did he have curry? And, 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 and the food was just so divine. And I made brother, uh, George, uh, to laugh, I said, look, the first, the other time he brought the doubles at, at our place where I was lodging in with brother Jonathan and we had the doubles around the table. But later he took out, took me out to where the doubles are normally had, where you have, buy it and you stand and have your doubles. And I said, brother George, these doubles were never made to be consumed around the table sitting down. You've got to consume the doubles while standing up. And when I heard that, it was, it was divine. So South Africans, whenever you visit Trinidad and Tobago, insist on making sure that they give you gyro, uh, they give you uh, doubles, and what caps with a capstone would be bake and, and shark. Amazing. And while I did it there, they must give you corn soup. They, they, these were the cuisines that we, we had in Trinidad and Tobacco. And wherever I went, I've, I've enjoyed many things. What about the dragon fruit? Believers, don't be scared by the name dragon. It's a very delicious fruit from Trinidad. It's purplish in color, but it's such a beautiful uh, 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 or delicious fruit. Uh, sweet mango, delicious fruit. Avocados there in Trinidad, the way they are grown, you need a big luggage to carry one uh, avocado. So everywhere I went, the food was amazing. And Trinidadians are very particular about how their meals are prepared. So I said brother to brother Ratanang George, I said maybe the natural type is the spiritual because in a sense that Trinidadians are very particular on how spiritual foods are prepared. They are very discerning. They want the message to be as organic as it can be. That's why I had such a tremendous time uh, ministering to them. So I enjoyed those cuisines, uh, uh, and I'm looking forward to visit next time. Um, I'll look for around for gyro, and I'll make sure that maybe I get Brother Chetty to prepare gyro for us here. It's a very delicious meal. 
uh, the doubles amazing. So all the recipes, I will make sure that I get them so that we have, we, I have them locally here. Now, the, that is the corn, that is the corn uh, soup, that is the gyro there. These were the meals that were our, I was enjoying in Trinidad. Amazing, delicious, absolutely uh, delicious. And uh, another thing, brother, uh, Jonathan George's wife, uh, sister made such a homemade bread. It was amazing. It just made me to feel at home. And may God bless uh, the wife of our dear brother for preparing that for me. Then something happened. I kept on saying to the brothers in Trinidad that, look, in Africa, we are tough. We have mountains. We have the biggest, the tallest mountain is Kilimanjaro. And I told them that I'm into hiking. I love hiking just to keep myself fit and for meditation. And I insisted that we need to go on the toughest terrain in Trinidad. Brother Ruben George kept on refusing and said, not the toughest will have to take the easy one. I said, no, I need the toughest, my brother. Uh, I think you must have seen the video at the beginning where I said, I took things lightly, but now I realize uh, the trails in Trinidad are tough because they are wet uh, and it was, it was tough. It's always raining there, but my, my, my. Uh, I'm glad to see brother Yadel Thornhill uh, they were able to help me. Brother Cliff, Brother Cliff was able to help me on the rope as well. Brother David and Brother Joshua, most of the brothers that I went on that uh, hiking trip with, the trail was just amazing. I came back exhausted, but in the next morning I was able to preach two sermons. So uh, Brother Ruben George said to me, I can indeed to guarantee that you are a very fit man. And I say the natural terms, the spiritual, I'm fit as well spiritually. So we went on to that hiking trip with the brothers. Uh, amazing. And we had to cross even the river. My, my, what a difficult uh, terrain. It was absolutely challenging, but I had a blessed time. Now, in closing, I want to say to the brethren in Trinidad, thank you for allowing me to preach the message as I see fit and to allow me to speak my convictions as a minister in this message. And thank you to all the brethren and I'm reminded I met Brother Terence Thornhill. Brother Terence, you wrote a book about your life. I've had your testimony. I read your the book that you gave me when I left New York. I, we couldn't even reach the continent. I was done with that book. It's a 15-hour flight, but in no time, I read that book. And I even read it one more time. And... Several times it reduced me to tears to see what the message can can produce, uh, what how the message can find a man on a certain trajectory and redirect his steps and make him to be such a meaningful soldier of the cross. Uh, the testimony of Brother Ratanang George. I mean, this is the time where he spoke to me about how God called him into the ministry and he was discouraged and things that God showed him supernaturally. I remember it just became so emotional that uh, we all we were reduced to tears based on uh, how he explained the supernatural experience that he had of coming into the ministry. So thank you brothers for having allowed me into your country and for having hosted me in the manner that you have hosted me, I had a wonderful time and keep on really raising the bar in the message and make sure that 
In Trinidad and Tobacco, you are accepting nothing else except the organic message as it was given by Malachi 4 and shun away from isms and movements. Uh, movements come and go, isms uh, later become wasms. But the fact of the matter, the message remains. And I'm glad that you kept it in the middle of the road for the all this, yes. I wouldn't have preached things that I preached there and felt comfortable unless it was it was the environment that was conducive for me to preach to uh, those things. And again, brother Theo at Headstone Tabernacle, God bless you richly, my brother. I saw you replayed the message that was preached on divine introduction. You replayed it in your church. I was humbled by that. And keep on praying for me. I'm glad that that sermon was such a blessing for you that you saw it fit to play it in your assembly. May God continue to bless you, brethren. And brother Ratanang George, I now have a family in Trinidad. It has been such an awesome, awesome, awesome experience. And brother, I think it was brother Jadel, Thornhill, he told me about something. Trinidad is known for the Carnival Fast Festival. It becomes a major tourist attraction, but the, the amount of filth that is displayed over that weekend is mind-boggling. So he told me that during that weekend, they normally would take all the young people, take them on a hiking trip, and they would go and camp for a weekend away from the city just to keep the young people away from the filth. I say, as we pray for them, I saw the need to be very tactical about around young people and have some interventions for them so that they never get it derailed. So I really appreciate you have been there, brother Albert Green. Thank you for those gifts in your office. You just wanted to give me everything. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, Brother Albert Green bought us bacon shack. And everyone had uh, enough meal to feed five people. And we enjoyed On my last day, uh, I really enjoyed my, my bacon shack. Thank you so much. And looking forward to visiting Trinidad and Tobacco next time. I had a blessed mm -hmm. time. Brother George Martin and Brother Harold Beckett have got good reputation in in Trinidad and Tobacco. Uh, and I spoke to them when I left and I spoke to them when I came back. And I'm glad that they said yeah, I represented them well. And I'm glad that I didn't tarnish their reputation as good ministers of this message from South Africa. So it was a tremendous visit and much, much appreciated. And may God bless Trinidad and Tobacco believers. And may you keep on keeping on. If we never meet on this side, we'll meet on the other side because the rapture is at hand. May God richly, richly bless you. And shalom. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we appreciate you for your grace and mercy. And we appreciate, dear God, for the learnings that we have had from Trinidad and Tobacco and for the safe traveling mercy. Bless all the ministers there, the pastors, trying the best that they can do for the, your people, dear God, and maintaining the standard of the message, which is the highest in the end time. Give them the wisdom, dear God, to keep on keeping on. And the believers as well, may you bless them abundantly, dear God. May you be gracious to them as I commit everyone to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you richly until we meet again. Shalom.